That was a good review. Now we can move on to some reactions that we haven't seen yet. Let's get through that one together. Have you read about this reaction in the second language book yet? I started reading about it, but I don't think I did that much on it yet. Okay, so this would be a good thing for us to go through together. Let's start by thinking about BH3. I believe the name for BH3 is boring. So let's think about the properties of BH3. Let's actually think about the periodic table for a second. Here's boron in the periodic table. Although, come to think of it, I don't know if this is really necessary for this reaction. For this reaction, I guess we can just memorize what happens in the first step. So, to start with, who's, uh, who, who do we know here would be reasonable to put at the tail of an arrow? The double bond. It would be reasonable to put the double bond at a tail. Yeah, I, I guess we can uh, look at this a little more. So here's boron. So who wants electrons more, boron or carbon? Who wants electrons more, boron or carbon? Boron. Who's more electronegative, boron or carbon? Carbon. So who wants the electrons more? Doesn't electronegative mean that you want electrons, right? Electronegative means that you want electrons. Since carbon is further to the right in the periodic table, it wants the electrons more. Now, where does hydrogen go in terms of electronegativity? We know that in the periodic table, hydrogen is off here in the corner, but that doesn't really make it very easy to see what its electronegativity is. In terms of electronegativity, hydrogen is pretty much between boron and carbon. Hydrogen is between boron and carbon in terms of electronegativity. These are good electronegativities to know here. In many cases, we just treat hydrogen as having the same electronegativity as carbon. After all, we usually think of a carbon-hydrogen bond as nonpolar. Yeah, so now I'm changing my mind again. Maybe this isn't so useful for thinking about this. All, all we really need here is So the pi bond is going to attack the boron. Why should it attack the boron and not the hydrogen? Well, one, and maybe the easiest way to see why that is, is that boron in borane has an incomplete octet. Remember that boron is one of the things that can have an incomplete octet. So a neutral boron actually has an incomplete octet. Well, it's not surprising then that it might want to gain some electrons. Maybe that's the easiest way to see why this is reasonable to put at the head. It wants to gain some electrons to get to a complete octet. And the next part of the reaction, we basically just have to have, to have uh, memorized. The next part of the reaction is that one of the hydrogens attacks one of the carbons, and this all happens concertedly, which is simultaneously. This isn't really something that you would have predicted, so we basically just have to memorize this. We just have to memorize this reaction. Oh, is it making a ring? That's a good question. Now that I've drawn the arrows, we should be able to draw what the product is. So, so take your time and see whether we get a ring or not. Remember, these are happening, happening concertedly. Take your time and draw the exact product that the arrows tell us we're going to get here, or the exact intermediate. And we'll see whether we did a ring or not. You are because this arrow is not moving this away, right? It's just 
it just okay so should if if there if this was breaking apart mm -hmm. shouldn't there be shouldn't it be going the opposite way like this going here and then oh so we should simply obey the arrows we should draw the product that the arrows tell us to draw so what product does the arrows tell us to draw Okay, good. This is a good time to just use the redraw and modify technique. So what does this arrow indicate? Where are the electrons coming from that this arrow represents? Where are the electrons coming from? The pi bond. Which means that I need to erase that pi bond. The electrons are moving out of that pi bond. We did that. And where are the electrons going to? Are these electrons going to a bond or to a lone pair? A bond. Yeah, a bond between what and what? The boron and the carbon. Right. Oftentimes it's useful to actually keep drawing the pairs of electrons that are moving, so you can keep track of them. So this pair of electrons has moved out of the pi bond and into the sigma bond. Now how about this arrow? Where are the electrons coming from that this arrow signifies? The hydrogen bond. The hydrogen boron bond. That's right. So again, it would be a good habit to actually draw in that pair of electrons. Well, since the electrons are moving out of there, we have to erase this bond. And this is the reason we're not going to get a cyclic product. I was thinking radicals. Ah. I was thinking like, that it needed to show both sides to break it, but not Right. Ah, I see what you're saying. Right. So, since these are double-headed arrows, we're moving this pair of electrons. That's right. We're moving that pair of electrons. And then where, are the, where is this pair of electrons going to? Is it going to a lone pair or to a bond? To a bond. A bond between one and what? Okay, that's what I think you drew, so that's good. This is a case where since we are having a little trouble with the product, we should really show the hidden hydrogen so we can see the changes that are happening. Right, so we're not dealing with radical mechanisms anymore. In fact, I don't think we're going to do any more ra radical mechanisms. The only radical mechanism I think you need to know is that radical addition reaction. Uh, actually, it depends. Maybe, maybe you might see one or two more. But anyway, most of the reactions we're doing are not radical mechanisms. If it was radical, we'd have single-headed arrows. This is a good technique, just to redraw and then make one modification at a time and to actually draw the pairs of electrons. Once we really understand electron pushing arrows, we should always be able to draw the right product if we're given the arrows. The arrows tell you exactly what changes to make. All right, as it turns out, maybe we don't really need this periodic table approach here. It's clear why the boron would be at a head because it has an incomplete octet. And actually, for the most part, we just have to memorize this, because otherwise we wouldn't have predicted that the hydrogen won't attack at the same time. So we're just going to memorize this reaction. Now, why is it that I put the boron on the right and the hydrogen on the left? Why is that more reasonable than putting the boron on the left and the hydrogen on the right? Because we really could have drawn it with the hydrogen ending up over here and the boron over here. Can you think of any reason, based on some of the criteria we've had in the past, why would, the boron, why would it be easier for the boron to attach to the right-hand carbon here and not the left-hand carbon? Well, when you drew it, whether this is true or not, you attached the boron first. Now, in reality, I might have drawn this arrow first, but, but these are simultaneous okay. arrows. These are simultaneous arrows. So, of course, I, I showed the hydrogen attaching to the left, but why didn't I show the hydrogen attaching to the right? Why is it easier for the boron to attach to the right instead of the boron attaching to the left carbon here? Are there any considerations we've used in the past for reactions that would explain why it's easier for the boron to end up on the right and not on the left? Because it's bulkier? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. How does that explain it? Because... Who's there's bulkier? There's less steric hindrance mm -hmm. on, the, on that carbon than the tertiary carbon. Good. So what are the two things that we're adding? Remember, alkaline it's useful to circle the things that are adding. Well, basically what's adding is a hydrogen and a BH2. What we're adding is a hydrogen and a BH2. So the question is, should the BH2 end up on the more substituted carbon or the less substituted carbon? While the boron is bigger and bulkier, it's going to be easier for it to get in close to the carbon with less steric hindrance. It's going to be easier for it to come in close uh, with the carbon with less steric hindrance. 